Sherpa, and this is a very exciting evening because we're going to be painting Aslan, our version of it anyways. I found this amazing reference of a white lion and was so inspired, and it just kind of instantly reminded me of uh, one of my very favorite book series from being a child. And then, of course, now I watch the movie series with my kids every year over the holidays. So, you know, I had to go back. This is definitely fan art, but by doing this reference of this line on a basic level, we're just painting a white line. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to be helping me bring this very interesting, fun, and inspiring lesson to you by zooming in cameras, turning everything on, making sure the lights work, uh, also checking the chat and links in any of the technology. If you are here during the live chat, we do take questions during the live show. So you want to put your uh, questions all in caps. Um, and either the moderators will have a link or resource right there ready for you. Watch for those links and resources, um, or I will answer your question live on the show. I'm so excited about today because this is the first sneak peek at the 2021 color palette. I decided that uh, one of the things that would make things much easier for my students in the long run is creating a very stable color palette that you guys knew if you had those basic colors any of the lessons coming out in 2021 and i expect there to be about 200 um would be available to you i based it on the acrylic april color palette which means there is a student version already selected out and a professional version so you can kind of work it for your budget and the only weird color that we have or might be unfamiliar to you um, even though it's really old and famous color, but it might be unfamiliar to you. Um, I have a whole blog about, so you can do it. There's a way to mix it with craft paint. There are all the brands that have a version of it and exchange information for you. So it doesn't have to be hard or easy. Just, just think of it like this. It's unfamiliar. This is a three hoot class. Let's just jump on in. Mm -hmm. uh, eight by eight stretched canvas. That's what we're on here. You can do boards, you can do paper. We're gonna be doing an eight by eight today. The nice thing about a square canvas is that it's easy to size up or down so you can customize this, even being fairly new to painting. Um, if you check the description below, there's just so many links and so many resources, but there's a link to our website. If my moderators can throw up the uh, Aslan webpage website link, um, on that is both a traceable, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to do the traceable today, uh, using Cero paper, and I'm also uh, have provided a grid so you guys can do either one of those, and that should make it easier. Let's paint the background in, shall we? Mm -hmm. Hop right on in. So out already, I have burnt sienna and Mars black. I'm going to make a fairly deep chocolate brown and paint the entire background. I decided to use this color for the background because I think it will allow me to build up these fair colors of the lion and have yet a very nice base because yellows and browns tend to be transparent and that's why i'm making that choice i'm gonna grab a biggish bright hmm. this is a what size it's, this is a it's definitely this biggish. is a number I, i'm pretty sure this is a 10 or 12 this is a 10. It's this is a number big. 10 i painted over it. uh bright so what you're talking about with a bright is a it's shorter than a flat it's synthetic it's got some pretty good spring it's a black pearl but it doesn't really matter in this moment what matters is that you have a brush that you're comfortable with that can handle the paint you're using. Mm -hmm. I'm using heavy body paint. This is burnt sienna. This is Mars black. I'm mixing them together and I'm making a dark brown. Now you could buy burnt umber and get a very similar hue, but what we found during acrylic April was that we could get by with about 10 colors and paint anything. So that's what we're going to test for 2021. 2021. Oh, I had a wish on here for blessing and calm healing for the world. That's a good That was wish. my wish and intention for everybody for 2021. Because I think really what we all just need is some boring, happy calm. Mm -hmm. That's all we're going to do. Now, on a stretch canvas, you can paint the sides so you don't have to frame. Um, I kind of come around the sides because generally we do frame. I don't generally hang up a raw canvas, so there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I guess I'm old school. <laughs> Old school. At least with these, I don't really do the unframed ones till the stretchers. That's the wood bars are much thicker. So if you're brand, brand, brand new to painting and you've never, 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 never painted before, um, you may want to go down in the description and read my hoop meter. I teach, I focus on teaching beginners. Those are people who really need tutorials and explanations. Um, 
but I have three stages of that. So if you have not painted in a very, very long time, you might have an easier time with what I would call a one hoot class. I do have a lot of big cat lessons. I made a playlist and there are two one hoot lessons in that playlist. Are there? But definitely follow along with this. Do the chat. One of the nice things about our baby. How are you doing today? Good. One of the nice things about our show is that it's very social. Is it? Yeah. You know, some shows are about listening to the brush and uh, watching the paint dry. And that is very cool and very calming. Ours is a little bit more about coming together and having a little bit of a laugh, relaxing and painting and mm -hmm. uh, feeling a little less alone and isolated. So. That is what Ooh, you're looking for. Teresa, we have that. Huh? Teresa was saying you can get cake decorating turntables and those work really well. That, yeah, I think any turntable, I put the link to the one I use. I use the Pioneer Woman one. Mm -hmm. um, I try to link the things that I'm using, but know that even my shopping guides, I give you three affiliate links. And if Amazon does that price raising thing, just use them as a shopping guide. Don't, don't pay raising. above market for your art materials. It's just the world we live in now. So I try to make it convenient. I try to give you choice. And then beyond that, make even more choices if necessary. So you'll notice about this. It's very kind of brushy. You can see the brush strokes. It's just kind of covered. Very could brushy. Have, yeah, isn't it? I could yeah. have done this with just even yep. a rag. This is kind of a colored ground, and it gives us a substructure to paint everything on and helps us have very rich and finished looking paintings. I see Farisha Gray. Hello from the Cambridge, UK. Um, and then uh, Linda is helping direct people. And then where are the other? Heather says, Heather C., you know, uh, I wear pink on Tuesday. No, that's actually Mean Girls, but I know what you mean. So, there we go. You guys know the drill. Don't use heat when drying your surface and thoroughly dry between between layers. Um, that way your your paint your paintbrush isn't sticky or tacky against the surface. It's you know by having it thoroughly dry, you won't have any delima delamination, which can happen where the it's skinned on the surface, but it's still wet underneath, so it peels off real easy. So you have to make sure you thoroughly dry it. Ah, I see Tamu and Amy and uh, Melissa and Heather Sherman and Laurel. Cinnamon and John, I can't thank you enough. I'm in isolation due to the virus, and you guys have saved my sanity these past few days. So glad to be able to catch you live. <laughs> Laura, I'm so glad we were able to be there with you live. I We were talking today about the new world post COVID and how it's impacted all, uh, all of everything, everything. And, um, you know, we've always been here for our community, but it has been really great to, I terrible circumstances, but we're so glad to be able to help out in that way and continuing to do so. Yeah. Okay. So things you want to know before I do the next stage, you want mm. your canvas to be thoroughly dry and cured and you don't want it to be warm because when acrylic paint is warm, it's kind of soft. So I'm going to demonstrate the traceable method. That is where you take a lined rendering and some type of transferable substrate. You could rub the back with, say, a chalk pencil. You could buy graphite paper. I really like Sarol paper, S-A-R-A-L. It is in the description down below. Um, I prefer white and yellow. So I, you'll notice that I have what is, this is stick artist tape. I've got some artist tape here and I'm going to tape this down in two places. You know, I was just in the, um, it was a weird thing that happened. I was on, maybe it was the deco group or the deco page. So hard to tell on Facebook anymore, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I wasn't in my group. I don't know if that's ever happened to you on Facebook where you're uh, in a space and you don't know you're not in your group. And I went to answer like, I'm the Art Sherpa and this is the Art Sherpa group. Thankfully, before I put that out there and made a hot mess of myself, I realized where I was. And so then just answered one artist talking to another. And it was really interesting. Somebody was asking how to use the transfer traceable method. And I gave like a, I don't know, a dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> the Sherpa answer. <laughs> <laughs> the Sherpa answer. Well, thank you, Patty, for the... The, the heat messaging support. Oh, I have Patty, solidarity Patty. in my messaging. I saw the paint, Patty. It looks good. It cra it, some of it cracked up like what you expected, but the micos were beautiful. It was really fun to get today. So 
I'm going to take a colored pencil. That was one of the tips that I gave. So you can tell where your lines are. I've got my Serral paper transfer facing down. I can reuse this sheet of paper for maybe 10 or 20 drawings. So uh, in my budget, I consider it economical because of its ability to be reused. I'm going to draw over all my lines, pressing firmly because I am using 32 pound uh, paper here and it's a little heavier than say your traditional paper that you might think of from your copier. If you want to do the grid that is available to you guys on the website for free, for free, John. Mm. And I will uh, come through and chapter this after or uh, tomorrow, maybe just in case I'm real tired at the end of the show to uh, break this down into steps and stages so you can find your spot on the replay easier. Uh, Mary Youngblood says they're not in lockdown, but they did put out a mask order. And I understand that. Uh, John and I have been uh, wearing masks. For uh, a while. For a while. We have friends that are doctors. And so we got some good information early on. What I'll say is uh, wherever you are on this journey, uh, don't take advice from me or John or anybody but your doctor. If mm -hmm. you have any questions about what you should do to be safe, go to your doctor, the person that you trust, and uh, really listen to them because they're going to really think about what you have going through. I know everybody has their own different experiences, but they'll help you make a, a good decision for your health and your community. Yes. So. I think it's real easy uh, in a position of influence to be like, you know, do this or do that. And we certainly let you guys know what we do. But in the end of the day, you've got to make good decisions for yourself. And interestingly enough, I'm an art teacher, not a medical expert. So I'm aware of that. But I talk to them and listen to their advice. We do. We do. So you can kind of see pretty easily where you've drawn. Like I almost was going to pull a paper, but I realized because I used this green paper, this green pencil, that I had missed the chin. Now, that wouldn't be such a big deal for me. I've, I've done a lot of lions, but if I hadn't, it might be really challenging. And this will give you an idea of what a nice transfer job that serral paper does. Um, acrylic can be kind of hard to use the transfer method with because it's made of plastic. Let's be honest, it's plastic. And plastic doesn't always want to take chalk. Mm. All traced in. That should be interesting on the big screen. So it's all traced in. We're going to put out some more colors. I'm also going to mist my paint. Um, here in winter, we um, definitely, definitely. <laughs> in winter, something we've never experienced before. In winter, I'm going to put out my cad yellow medium. Or initially, I've got my burnt sienna. I'm also going to put, I've got my Mars black. I'm going to put out some titanium white. And let's see if we can start there. I have my Naples yellow light to the side here, which is actually a really lovely color for something like this. And I'll put it out to show you again. If you don't have that color, read the blog. That's a good way to get through. If you don't have this color today, you could do yellow ochre or a different color to alternate on it. So cad yellow medium, titanium white. Naples Yellow Light, which is sometimes called uh, Titanate Yellow, Pigment Code PY53, hmm. Mars Black, Burnt Sienna. And again, the blog is there, and the blog really gets into it and explains it. Let's just get a bright or... Mm, mm. Just want to grab a bright and see what bright I got. What bright I got? I'm going to get a scruffy bright. You this like is, the bright. That's too big of a bright. What makes a bright a bright? A bright is a square-shaped brush that has a shorter length from the end of the ferrule to the toe of the brush, length out. A flat would be longer like this. This is a good size brush for an eight canvas. It's an eight brush. It's nice. And this will give me some nice dry brushing. We're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing techniques and layering techniques. Mostly we want to kind of capture value and really see like what's light, what's dark, and that's how we're going to create shape and form on our canvas. I'm going to get my brush wet, wipe off a little of the extra. And let's pull a bit of our cad yellow and, interestingly enough, our Mars black together. And we can get kind of a yellow gray. You can always put a little of your burnt sienna into it if you want to take it into more of a beige. So look at that. And I have a deeper color here. So we're going to start with 
darker tones. I'm dipping my brush in water to improve flow. And I'm going to come along here. It's a pretty clean line because the line in on the line's face, just like in general, will be fairly clean, even though the mane is like got a lot going on. Got a lot going on. A little more black. They have that noble, clean shaven face look. They do. They do look like somebody clipped their face. It's like a puppy cut. Or I guess it's a lion cut because I think groomers <laughs> actually right. cut people's dogs. The lion had it first. The lion, he was rocking it first. So He's this like, is. I got this look. Kind of a good gray. And what are we doing? We're thinking about value. Right? Let's just drag this out. You know, there's only one group that gets to laugh about the lion's lionness. You know, that whole. Yeah. Haircut what thing. what group is it? The hyenas. <laughs> Did somebody tell dad joke and you repeated it? No, I, you just walked into that one. Just I just walked right into it. Yes, I walk into a lot of John's jokes. So you can see I'm kind of pulling my brush out and I'm flicking across. There was no ham fisting at all. I wasn't trying to It is okay that some of the paint is showing through. That's why we did brown, so that wouldn't be a problem. I get kind of carefully into the black because, again, value is our friend here. Value is how light or dark something is. Mm -hmm. A three-hoot class, you will have uh, kind of just gotten a sense from two, like you start out with one hoots, and that's just learning some basic color mixes, basic layering techniques, lessons are shorter. Um, this lesson, I actually would have normally made a two-hoot, except I didn't know how long it was going to be. And when a lesson can be longer, that can be fatiguing for a student. So I try to take that into account. Getting my yellow loaded up here and a little of my black loaded up like, like you do. Yeah. We definitely want to be dark under the chin. And I say go a little bit above where you had the fur on the chin. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being that you're going to paint that fur down and you want to have a nice layering over. If your paint gets too yellow or too green, you will want to add more burnt uh, sienna into it or more black. But you want to take it out of the green. Because sometimes when you do black and yellow, it can go green, depending on how your paint company handled their pigment. And every paint company does it a little bit different, which is why I talk a lot about uh, these subjective things. Mm so that you can make adjustments for what you're painting with, just in case you're not using my exact material. And again, we are just making sure we have that first layer, and I'll show it to you when we're done so you can get a sense of where we're going and let you look at it for a second. And we will try not to go too far, and I'm just literally scruffling. See, I'm scruffling? Mm -hmm. Scruffers, just covering canvas. So get your canvas to here. This is your Mars black, a little cad yellow. You could use yellow ochre if you have that, and titanium white. I've got a little burnt sienna. Sometimes I was throwing the burnt sienna in there. I haven't even gotten into my Naples yellow. You can yellow ochre if you want to. Linda Sue says she does want to paint this one, but she may do it in watercolor. I highly recommend it. I think it'll be a beautiful watercolor. And I hope some of you guys will come join us for our Watercolor Wednesday lessons on Facebook. We are teaching watercolor on Wednesday on Facebook. Classes are great. Mm -hmm. Got a great lineup for January. All right. Let's see. Are you guys catching up? I think so. What are the pros? What are the pros using for a bright brush? Well, I do tend to use professional brushes. So lines of brushes that you will look at um, in the professional, you want to look at Princeton's, you want to look at Silver Brush, you want to look at Raphael, and you want to look at Da Vinci. Can I, can I go a non-painter's observational view? Hmm. Professional painters use the brush that gets the job done. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and so it, what I found is that beginning painters oftentimes buy brushes that are labeled as student or budget yeah because because they don't know what they're needing and yet what they need is the really good quality pro brush that performs well 
consistently. So, so paint brush labels can be really challenging when you're new to shopping. And here's what I'll say. Simply Simmons Extra Firm Filament mm. is a good budget option. Good or heavy bodied paint. Actually, the Simply Simmons line is a good budget option for heavy body paint. So it doesn't have to be the most expensive brush in the universe. And sometimes the most expensive brush isn't the right brush. But what you want is a good firm filament or hog or a mix of synthetic and hog that has good spring, has a nice edge, and gives you a sense of control. Mm -hmm. um, and again, those brush lines that I listed are really, really good. And I've included a link to the brush guys, and they carry a lot of stuff at discount. They do. All right. Somebody is saying, happy birthday, John. There's a few of those now. It's not my birthday yet. That's a little and bit Elena's weird. like, how would this one be with a bit of scraffito? I think she just wanted to hear me say scraffito. I do. I think that's what was happening. I'm going to put a little brown and black into my brush. So I got a couple days before my birthday. It's the 31st. Yeah. So it's we got a little bit of time. We'll be doing a giveaway on John's giveaway. birthday. You guys get stuff on my birthday. I'm adding this here. Let's come in in this ear area and kind of also, again, go dark. Because we know that we're going to get this shape worked out with our value. And, I, and because so much, I'm not being super specific or precious about his uh, ears up there because so much of the main covers it. I'm going to come into my black and burn sienna. And again, these are darker. I'm going to flip this around so I have a better darker. You want darker. You can see me get a little bit of the black. You can show those values. And they're worked out. Mm -hmm. Now, also behind the ear is an even darker value. So let's get that. I'm going to almost hit into the black just right behind his little ears. That way there's room to lighten things up as we go. Easy to put lighter for harder to get the dark back in once you really start lightening everything up. And we want those dark values I'm coming around. And then we'll take a little stop space when we're ready. And now I'm going to continue to add a little white into my brush. Little yellow. Hmm. Starlet asks, John, what do you want for your birthday? A World new peace? year. <laughs> uh, just a new year is all I want this year. <laughs> a new different year. <laughs> but luckily, at the end of my birthday, asteroids and deities aside, <laughs> we should have one. I don't know what you mean. Well, oh, not, like in case the asteroid takes out the planet? Or, is it, or some... You're a dark horse, sir. Look, that's a, a, look. I think we got a path. There's two days. There's not much left that could stop this clock from... I'm optimistic. I'm going to get a new year. 2021. That's all I want. So now we've got his basic face in, right? We did our ears kind of dark and a darker value around the edge of the ears. We're coming in around his face. And we have this very deep base to build um, to build a little lion up on. And I now, like it. I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna over to my navel's yellow because you know I love me some. Great color for this piece. Come here. Oh, I should let them look at it a little more. Do you want to let them look at that? For a minute? Just I'll... a little more, just so you guys can kind of catch up. I'll, I'll blend this out. Oh, so it's a not question. a problem for me later. but A non it's, mm. it's a genuine question. Mm. Okay. So Rebecca was asking, Hi, doesn't, Rebecca. doesn't being bent over the painting like that hurt your neck and shoulders? It's not great, but I'm sitting in a very high chair and the turntable helps mitigate some of the extreme bending I would do. Um, so here's what. I paint flat, not because flat is the best way to paint. I paint this because it's the best for the camera and you. But you should be painting your work at a tilted angle that's facing you. It will help you see the artwork better, and it will help you maintain better posture when you're painting. So sometimes when you're looking at an instructor online, um, you know, you may want to ask those follow-up questions. Definitely, I'm always here to answer, but that's what it is, is sometimes if you're teaching online, you're teaching to your cameras so that the students can see the work. 
Um, a lot of people who teach at the easel stand at a, at a very uh, unideal uh, angle off the canvas because they're operating a camera themselves. Now, we're lucky on our easel classes. John's got five cameras, and we just switch angles around me so I can have good positioning there and do some longer classes. But that's why you see some of the stuff that you do online. Mm. I'm going to continue to add my Naples yellow into the, into the mix. Now, you're still on the underpainting phase. We are underpainting. We're underpainting quickly. Which is a little darker. Oh, yes. You're underpainting. So in acrylic, we go dark to light. And in watercolor, we go light to dark. So it's very interesting that that is one of the places that my process of painting really switches. And again, I'm wanting this brown and yellow. Mm. Just bringing this color around here. This is just letting now, me work brush, some value. And all what what babe? the brush stroke showing through is really something that's important here. Yes, it creates an implied line and texture that begins to build up that sense of fur. You know, there's a lot of things you can do to create a fur. You could have a specialty brush like a grass comb or a fan. But this is a way to get there uh, without having to worry about those things. And As I come through his nose, I do want to lighten my value a good bit. So I'm adding more yellow. This is one of those areas where you could overwork something and get too smooth of a color transition easily huh well you could i i'll tell you what um value understanding how light or dark something is uh will make up for a lot of things that kind of maybe go a little pear shape for you mm. so if you're like well i'm i'm really kind of keeping track of the value you'll come out okay gotcha so uh it wonderful thing is is if you've been colorblind uh, you may find suddenly that your ability to recognize value, and that's not every type of colorblindness, but several of the common types will do this, don't struggle as much with value. And what nobody tells them is if you get value right, you can use almost any color. So <laughs> suddenly that's not such a big deal. If you grab a wrong color, you do something. And remember, you can always label the colors that you have and use color theory, which is a very formulaic, consistent considered process mm. so it's true once you understand it, it's true for everything so even if you couldn't see it you would understand what it would do and how it would look to others and to get a little more uh brown and black on my brush as you do coming up above the nose perhaps even a little more uh black here and again this is just very very loose this is the beginning and i might bring a little bit of it in the middle i haven't rinsed out i'll just go ahead and load up a bunch more of the yellow on my brush and some of the white and you can see it gets right into his colors that's just it's just it's made to be his color he's got some pretty Pretty defined lines here, so I got to get those back. Sometimes I get into the joy of painting and I forget to pay attention to my line. But it's, as you can see, it's pretty easy to put back, and because we have so many layers on him, you know. Really great message from Ashley here for you. Oh, hi, Ashley. How are you today? She just says, thank you, Cinnamon and John and family, for everything you guys do. It's truly incredible. I can't even imagine what it's like. We love you guys so much for everything that you, that you do and you are. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I really, yeah. really do. And uh, it means a lot to me that you oh, guys uh, come up and show up for the work that we do. I'm just making sure that his face shape is retained even as I was doing his little fur because he's such a Actually, strong, sculpted little area of face. For a half second, I'm going to come in with a number four round. I'm just wanting a little more control over what I'm doing. I'm going to paint in some black and some basic colors, and that will be his basic face 
uh, laid in. Just using the black. Sometimes when you're painting, you just want to get some shapes in. I'm here to the corner. There's a very distinctive little uh, mouth, which is super cute when it's closed. Uh, less charming and adorable when it's open and coming at you, but super cute when it's closed. Uh, and come along here and uh, sort of tighten up around this area so that those features are well defined. And what we have is covered by paint. We can even get a little bit of a gray going here. I'm going to come back with some different values, but I just want to know where everything is. And if I have to, I'll tip up for a better view. Don't forget that sometimes you have to change your point of view to capture something. And I just want to make sure I've got the right point of view for what I'm doing. I'm going to go around his eyes. Take a bit of it down on the tear duct. And again, keep in mind what we're doing is that first layer of painting. We're blocking in. We're creating a little roadmap of what is valuable to us and will be useful in our visual information later. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and add that little bit of blue in on his eye. I'm going to take phthalo blue for this one. His eyes are not ultramarine, they are phthalo blue, and I think that that will work the best. So this is phthalo blue. Phthalo blue, let's go over it again. Cad yellow medium, burnt sienna, Mars black, Naples yellow light, sometimes called tight knit yellow, titanium white, phthalo blue. If you need more information about tight knit yellow, I wrote a whole blog about it to help you out and make it easy. And take just a little of my white into my blue because thalo blue can register as almost black on its pure pigment. And I just want to make sure that I have the beginnings of his beautiful eyes sort of laid in. That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's let you guys look at that and catch up. I'm wondering if John would microwave my Earl Grey tea. I can a little microwave unicorn your Earl is starting to peek out in my creature cup. It's like my great joy. It would be great. So I will say hi to everybody really quick. Um, hmm? Can I talk about what? Uh, first, I have to answer what Tammy Edwardson said. Did I see the gingerbread monolith? No, but immediately after this show, I'm going to Google it. Um, how did I pick? When I looked at him, I was looking at... Every, every image, every moment has kind of an under, under the surface mother color. It takes a minute to develop your eye um, to see that. But in this one, it was really simple because he was so neutral. He's these light colors. They have a yellow cast. And then also you see a strong brown cast. And I knew that if I began with a dark brown and built up the grays, it'd be very easy to get him into the light values. But... Putting those colors underneath would handle the fact that yellows and browns can be kind of transparent and therefore uh, sometimes make, like if I, did a, if I did a purple under here, it would be very graying and there was would neutralize all the colors on top. I, um, that's a micro mister. <laughs> I have a link for these in the description, um, but it's for like, you, you got to buy them like 18 at a time. All I'll say is I lose them often enough. That it turns out 18 was a good number. Useful. <laughs> what? Useful number. It was a super useful number. Whoops. There's me hitting my, my line. All right. So let's work on the eyes a little bit. All right. Because oh, there's a lot of fur and everything that happens around. So if we get the eyes going, that'll be very good. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to come here to the corner of his eye. 
Um, be sure, guys, to be looking for the January newsletter. It's going to talk about the new paint colors, the new watercolor, the new resources, the new goals, and the fact that you're going to be getting a month plan laid out ahead of you so you know what to buy for the month. And again, because we're using the same colors and same basic uh, materials again and again, you can build up to that collection and paint with us for the whole year. 200 plus lessons. Hit that subscribe button. If you have not already, because you don't want to miss out on all those free lessons. I'm taking just burnt sienna. And I'm pulling that down into his duct and around his little eye because he's got a nice, strong little version of that brown around there. I'm using a number four round. It's an art sherpa round. Yep. Uh, has my own brush. It's kind of cool. Getting a little bit of white into this. I'm going to come right here and touch this little outer area. And it indicating that and back here at the outer corner of his eye. That's fun. It is actually fun. I don't know why that sounded sarcastic. <laughs> like, that's fun. No, it's actually fun. You should do it. Do it with me. Follow along. You'll like it. You can do this. By the way, this is doable. It is very doable. If you've, you know, I mean, if you haven't painted a painting before and you're painting with me now for the first time, Guys, give yourself a break. Realize this, may, this is a three-hoop painting. Mm -hmm. You're really new to painting. And today's goal should be to have fun, put paint on a canvas, and be okay with the result. Yeah. I have 600,000 people who painted with me, and I can tell you, based on that considerable sampling of the human race mm -hmm. from all over the world, from all walks of life and all ages, uh, people that are very determined to paint do. So uh, the people who come to the classes and uh, try all the things and do not give up and keep trying to paint and keep trying to paint, they do reach their goals. It's uh, there is a, you know, for some people there's a little talent, but for the most part, it's determination. I'm Kim gonna, loves your hair. Love my hair today? I love Thank your you. hair today. I'm rocking the pink for winter. It's the light pink root with the deep pink tip. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found out, uh, and, and, and meant it in a nice way, uh, John, John Little, my mom's uh, husband, saw the vid wedding video and was like, she looks really good as a redhead. She should wear her like that again. That actually <laughs> looks nice. No, it does. You look really, really, really nice as a redhead. I feel like this is kind of being a redhead. I'm just it was some the black. original way I found you. <laughs> the red hair? <laughs> the red hair be doing it? We're going to just exaggerate kind of some of that black lining around here as well, pulling that in. So everything is always like a little dance. Right? Do a little dance. Make some changes to your painting. I'm going to come along with a little light gray, leaving that little dark outline edge to sort of an inner lid. Fun stuff. I really like to do eyes, so if you really wanted to do an eye and the lion eye is like it's all about the lion eye for me oh my gosh you showed up for the right lesson mm. i'm going to come back with a little dark again just building up and then you now maybe start to talk about pupil in the center of his eye it's just a beginning conversation uh so lions have around people they do not have the oh. uh cat eye pupil that you might think of on a house cat I saw that and was like, I didn't, I mean, like, I didn't know And you know were wondering why. if I made a mistake? No, no, just like, <laughs> because I've seen other lions before and just didn't know why. Uh, I think it's because of the type of predator they are and the way mm -hmm. they need to take in light and versus what your cat has to do and how it hunts. Uh, probably something like I saw some documentary. I watch a few documentaries on Netflix. I have some insomnia, those that follow the Facebook page. Like, they're like, man, she's been up late a lot this month. So I saw, like, 20 comics posted every day. Because I get up at night, and then I get philosophical, and I start questioning the nature of man and what it is to be alive and what we can do to be more content in the life that we have <laughs> at that 2 in the morning. Like something... So sound advice at 2 in the morning, right? Yeah, it sounds like something you'd be doing. Because <laughs> he sleeps. As much as possible, as often as, as possible. As possible. Yes, he does. He sleeps. No, no anger at him for sleeping. That sounded a little like he sleeps. My head hits the pillow and I fall asleep. I missed. I missed. I missed. So I'm going to pull out some of our white paint. I'm going to get into our thalo blue and start getting in some of these lighter values. <laughs> the bottom of his eye is a lot lighter. 
And I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to put out some glazy medium because my paint is being so gloppy and so difficult. That's not good. No. I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to get a humidifier for the table like right after the show. To order I have it. one that the I can table? bring to you. The, the table humidifier? Would you like one momentarily? Uh, yeah. It's mom- it glows too. My, it would be a glowing humidifier. Hold on a second. I got so magic. So this is in the description. Uh, if you're going to paint with acrylic paint, I'll uh, say get a bottle. Um, this paint brand has always been kind to me. The uh, owner of the company, Mark Golden, has ever been kind. But nobody remunerates me. I don't. I'm treated kindly. I'm not paid. Um, that said, uh, Golden Acrylic Glazing Liquid Gloss. Uh, I bought bottles for my mom. Right. With, for her painting, she does a show on Monday nights and she's hooked on it. It just slows down the drying time of your paint and lets you glaze. Retarders, uh, which are what they call the slow drying agents for paint, um, they can be problematic for new artists uh, and have a lot of really, really narrow ranges of performance. Whereas this is super forgiving and is for everybody and just makes acrylic a joy again. It's really almost, I believe it's the polymer base to their open series, which is acrylic that dries slower. Golden opens are acrylic that dries slower, and they do work with every other acrylic paint for the most part. So you can see that's coming off my brush just so much easier now. Make sure that you guys are seeing in here, and John is finding me a humidifier, because, like, of course, during a show is when I suddenly discover that I need a thing. I'm going to get a little of the yellow into my brush and maybe a little more white. Try and create a little more of an aqua feel. We want to have a very light under his eye area. We can darken easily, but we want that under his eye light area. Just keep bringing it forward. You'll notice that I work in little increments, right? I don't push myself through everything in two seconds. I work through in little increments. Pull out my brush here. No, 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 we're okay, babe. Thank you. I can put his eye iris back in. I just kind of need to know where it is for the blending of the blue. It'll be darker on these outside areas. All right, so blend that back in. That it's still bright. It's still very, very blue. You can always go back with the light value where you need it. So play between those two. Play between. Enjoy. Play. Adjust. Enjoy. You'll see me work my brush into the paint, and what I'm doing is I'm loading it through the belly. By pulling it through the paint, flipping it over and pulling it through the paint, I am uh, creating a scenario. Oh, that's a giant humidifier. Okay, I was going to get like the little panda online. I, find, I have a panda. I, that's what I was actually looking for, but it was, I think that it's by the kids. Okay, that's so what they one, do. This one will solve you in short term. It will solve, well, hopefully, we'll be finding out, does this create some relief? I'm going to come up here with my deep blue at the top of the eye. Deep blue at the top of the eye. Oh, just, no, have it go at me, man. I, I feel like I'm, I'm dry, like, drying out here on the vine. We uh, moved to an area that's colder, and, uh, wow, running uh, heaters and fireplaces and stuff like that, it's very drying, isn't it? Enjoy painting the eye, shall we? Is it going? Mm-hmm. Now, when I have his eye in like that, I'm going to take a little black and blue. And I'm going to very preciously come around the outside of the eye with a very dark rim. See how we're doing? Little bit of dark outside his little eye, isn't it? Is it coming out now? Let's pull a little white out. We're going to get some very light blue. Look how that's like almost a white light blue. It's like ice on the Arctic. 
I'm thinning it, <gasps> running it through the brush. What? Rain panda just says, did Hi, you just panda. say a panda humidifier? Yes. It's tiny, too. It's a desktop USB version. Match the uh, panda pencil sharpener that my kid stole. So I guess I need to buy a cat for the new cat pencil sharpener. I'll find the pen. I'll find the panda humidifier thing. Well, no, but the kids stole it, so now I had to switch to a cat theme. Well, we'll we'll find other humidifiers. So we're just making sure that we've got that nice value in the eyes, right? Nice value. Have nice value in your eyes. Mm. Nice values. What happens is sometimes I get uh I want to make sure these eyes are in light enough. And I'm just literally using the toe. I want to make the eyes even lighter. I think even lighter. I'm going to let them have a moment. Think about what they've done. <laughs> no, they're fine. But I do want them to rest before I come back and glaze some purple on there. So let's look at that. So what we were doing is we're kind of layering up the blue. We're trying to create a darker blue up top and a lighter blue uh, at the bottom. You want a dark outer ring. We're doing the inside of his eyes and his lids the way you do. I may even come in and get a, um, a detailed little brush here to fuss with him. Because sometimes these small details, this is a number one detail. Sometimes these small details do a good job. A little darker in the top half. There we go. That's there. Sometimes you let your paint rest a little bit so you can capture it. Uh, get it to do what you want. Is it doing what you want? It is now. It always does what it's told. Sometimes I have to tell it to think about its life choices. But yeah, it always comes in line. There we go. Get those nice little orbs. Play with them. Enjoy. There's lots to do there, so, you know, don't short yourself the enjoyment of painting in the Orbs. eye. We can get all fun with the fur, but it's nice to make sure the eyes are what we're hoping for. Another good thing we can kind of get into right now is the nose and everything, because, again, the hair goes so fast. Mm. So let's take a little bit of our blue and black, like you do. And um, we're going to paint the center of this little nose here. There's a really fun um, little shape that the lion's nose does make, and I like to kind of try to capture that. It's certainly in the traceable. If you look at the reference, you can kind of see that. Sometimes I have to turn this so I can get a good view at what I've got going on. Mm -hmm. Now, the nice thing is you can get a little uh, white into this. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm taking a very deep gray and lining a little bit that inside. And then let's take a little bit of deep gray. Talk a bit about this part of the nose coming down. Top of that part of his uh, mouth right here is a little bit of a lighter value. Down inside that. Mm. Enjoy. A little bit coming down, just sort of defining the shape of his nose and his world. Now, I'm going to wipe out my brush. You'll notice every time I rinse out this round brush, I wipe it with a towel. The reason for that is, is that uh, with some of these brushes, a little raindrop, a little drop of water can hide on the ferrule. 
We're going to add some shadow under that nostril. Coming down the middle. A little bit right here, sort of above his little lip that we're seeing. Come get some black coming down. And we talked about this, that sort of triangular pattern. Now, that's a good question. Get the triangular pattern here. Mm -hmm. Why blue on the nose? Um, I really like the combo of blue and black. It will tie very nicely into the eyes visually on the painting. You could do a mix of a magenta and brown to get that sort of pinking of the nose. But I really find personally, mm. I, uh, I like what happens here and i've done enough of these to be like oh i know what i want you know what you want to you just don't know you know it yet i'm going to come here and at this part of his mouth start to talk about the gray area that is under his fur and there's quite quite one here from here We'll be coming with some very light, but it's nice to clean this up for later when we do. Oh, it's really good. Let's finish up these eyes. I rinse down them and take a little bit of my black. A little bit of a round focal, right? Nice mm. little eye and lion's eye looking at you. Try to get them in the same position. There we go. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, um, I put out, I use fluid. This is in the description. You can also thin your white paint with water. Oh, the humidity is nice, John. That's making a difference. Oh, good. It's also cooling down the room, which is weird. I put out way more than I need. I think that's just probably coincidental to everything. No, no, like I can feel a breeze coming from it. Oh, sure. Coming along there, and I'm making a little, like, wet. It's like the little wet area where his eye hits his lid. The thing I like to do. It's looking good. Now I'm going to take blue and a little of my glazing liquid and I'm going to rub those together. It's transparent. Huh. You could just do water. Notice it's create kind of a little shadow under the eye. Across the lid. I will pull some white into my brush. A little bit of reflection in his eye. It's always a good idea. A little bit of a hairline reflection along his nose. Yep. You can do this like the Santa. You got this. All right. Coming down. And let's add a bit of this. The top of that lip there. Sometimes I'll reposition to get a better position. You move, move your painting, not your body. Mm. Right? Your painting should move, your body should move. So uh, zoom in on those eyes. So they can kind of see where we're at. Actually, I got to put one last reflection in there, finish them off. 
This is the very white reflection. Oh, that's so nice. That kind of really pulls those eyes together. And so that's how you get those just like so super alive eyes. Uh, Stephanie Jane says, hi, Red. Uh, a bunch of people. Uh, Ruth Simpson says, I'm a big fan of C.S. Lewis writing. I've read the Narnia series several times. I know. It's just, there's always something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when you're young and you read it, you, uh, you live in such a magical world that you do look in the back of cupboards and wardrobes <laughs> and cabinetry for I'm a period sure of time. There. I went through whole things like I went through the Narnia and looking and then I went through uh, Never Any Story and looking and, mm -hmm. you know, John Carpenter Mars. There was just a series of them where I was like, there's got to be a fantasy world I can live in. Got to be an exit. Here. Everyone's looking for their Matrix door. Everybody's looking for their Matrix door. Yeah, but his like his outcome was like, I go back in the Matrix. <laughs> it's just terrible where you live, sir. Back, back, back. in. So I'm going to take a little of this yellow and I'll grab uh, some of my white. Uh, sometimes we'll get some black into it to create some shadow, but, you know, we're just right here. Let's come into the ear. Mm. It's a pretty scruffy brush. This is a number eight Cambridge. Who are you calling scruffy? This brush be scruffy. It's nice to have a scruffy brush. You know, the Simply Simmons uh, hog bristles at Michael's will work. So, you know. They may not have the longevity as some of these other brushes. Nope. They will definitely crack and peel and flake and do all the things, but you'll, you'll be fine. Mm. Right? The thing is, is not, the important part is you'll be fine. Let's come and uh, add a little highlight around his little ear. And again, it's rough. And it's rough because it's going to be furry. Right? You can kind of see how I'm pulling in around to shape the ear. I've got a lot of mane going around it. It is not, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard the, the saying, it's not the hill I want to die on. <laughs> this isn't it. Sometimes in your painting, you've got to figure out where that hill is. I go for the eyes and nose. Don't, don't make it be the ears, in my opinion. In, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm? I can see it. You can see it? I can understand. And they get a little burnt sand into that, too. I like the combo of these. Uh, that's a pretty good combo. I, am, I think I'm going to put out some fresh white. And the reason that I am is you can see the skinning, skinning, skinning. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the conditions of my room which we didn't ingest until later in the painting. This is the main up around his head. Naples yellow light, burnt sienna, there's a little black on my brush, and some titanium white. I'm just starting to Build some of that up. Let's think about the directionality of the hair. And also that, you know, he's got a little bit of, you know, dark hair. Right here. So just pulling it. So there we go. Just enjoy that. The sound of the brush on the canvas mm -hmm. and the way the paint lays itself down. It's enjoyable. And that's okay to, to enjoy it as it happens. That's, that's perfectly acceptable. We're going to continue to come through here and, and this hair is going to become a little more beige and yellow. And, you know, the thing is, is that it comes in front of the ear and that's mm -hmm. why I was like, don't. Don't have this be the spot because we're, we've got to do a lot of stuff around it. You see a little bit of it, but a lot of it is hidden. So, you know, I'm just bringing this back. Just, and that's yeah. why it's okay to, uh, yeah, that's, that's super why it's okay. 
right? We've got this sort of interesting little curl of hair that's here. And the reason we're doing this hair here is because we're going to then let the, the face hair kind of come right up to that edge. So we want to make sure that we've got a bit of that. Sometimes I get the glazing medium into it so I can really see what's a foot. Mm -hmm. If you need to get a little water into it so it flows off your brush a little nicer, you can. Pulling that down. A lot of S strokes, which means there's a slight implied S curve to my line. So, and it's okay to paint over those ears just a bit. They're, they're going to yeah, come back. Yeah, you need to. We, 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 I mean, yes, we painted them in and we had them, but, you know, they're, they're going to get painted over. That's. That is what's happening. They're going to get painted over. We're building up the layers. Mm -hmm. This will come together in about a three-layer moment. <laughs> <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Yeah, it really does. Uh, paintings like life tend to resolve uh, in, a, in a distance that doesn't make it easy to see hmm. that everything is going to be okay. And so it's really towards it at the end. Everything works out in the end. So if it's not working out, it's not the end. And that's an important thing to remember. Just getting that sort of basic thought in there. We got some basic thoughts. Basic thought. He looks like kind of a regular colored lion right now. Hmm. All right. Let's change that up a bit. And we can do it all with a uh, filbert, but I'm going to go in with my number eight cat's tongue and get real specific about it. I'm going to make sure that my brush has got a nice flow. And I'm going to come here. And build these things up. We're not going to be painting every single hair. We just paint some of the hair. Mm Sometimes I'll add some yellow into just to capture some of the gold of this little fellow. Mm -hmm. That was my cad yellow. Brighter, isn't it? Is that cad, not mm -hmm. Naples? I added some cad. I've already had some uh. Naples in there. I'll layer those two yellows together. What we learned during Acrylic April painting with these for 30 days every day is there's no place that we couldn't go if we wanted to go there. If we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. It just this is the part where it just starts to come together. At least this part of his mane will come together fairly, fairly just, auspiciously just, just, and quickly. I'm going to add a little dark. We just go through the values, right? We just blow the fur and go through the value and.
scrub any of the white that we've got. Mm -hmm. he's, you're just adding some. Adding some light value to it. Visual texture. Yeah, he needs some, doesn't he, though? Now, is it okay to be a little impasto here? It is wonderful to be a little impasto here. It's okay to be a little painterly here. It's okay to just find your space through his gorgeousness, because he's beautiful. I mean, my cat yellow sometimes. Just changing up between the naples and I'm brushing it in and there's wonderful S strokes and mm. we have nice color underneath and you know, yes, as we go forward, the hair might be getting darker, as you can see here. Right? We definitely, definitely know that it's going to be darker here coming in. And I can take this brush quite easily and, again, keep that intrinsic value. And more painting lines. Just use up the paint I put out since I put it out anyways. Just titanium white. Now under here is maybe darker, but we do want that sort of like flowing little structure of hair. How do you know the difference between the ultramarine and thalo blues? So the thalo blue has a turquoise color to it, and the ultramarine blue has a red bias to it. In color, we'll talk about the bias, which is like a hidden color that within that primary color. So when you look at a thalo blue green shade, it does have a green shade to it. So a lot of times they'll put it as a primary hmm. in mixing sets, which is like, yeah, maybe not that one because cyan's better. It doesn't have a red or a blue shade. Um, you want something that's a little more neutral, uh, ultramarine, a lot of people go, well, I got blue, but it didn't make the green I expected. And that's because they had an ultramarine. It was red shade. And whenever you have a hidden primary, um, which is the primary that you can see red, yellow, and blue, and then the hidden primary, which you can't necessarily always see, which is the bias of your color. If all three are present, your colors begin to dull mm -hmm. and will be unexpected. So your oranges won't pop orange and your... You know, your greens won't pop green and you'll be sitting there going, what is going on? And I like the yellow cast to him, so I don't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. Just continue to go here. We're not going to, we're not going to go anywhere we don't want to go, will we? No, we won't. No. No, we won't. He can't make us go anywhere that we don't want to go. So there we go. That's where we're at on that main right now. It's quite flowing. It's real pretty. Um, I'm going to kind of do this. Uh, I let the room get too dry and my paint just dried on me. So I'm going to do this. Don't do this at home. Just take better care of your paint. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing. Well, I mean, the humidifier is making a huge difference now, but we've been running the fireplace in the house and uh, and had the heaters on and it's just like, it's like watching your paint be like, what, like a salt vampire got it from mm. first Star Trek, you know? <sighs> yeah, it was, it's a thing. Put out some more of this. And I'll put out a little of my Mars black and some of my burnt sienna and we'll get my round brush out and then we'll do some detailing work, which will really, really be lovely. Mm. And then, uh, there you are. The most beat up burnt sienna in the world. <laughs> like this, this tube of paint is, has traveled and been through some stuff. I can tell you that right now. It's 
get our number fours out. You know, let's really load into our white paint like you do. Mm -hmm. Let's get into our yellow here, our navel's yellow light. You could do your cad yellow. You could do your ultra, uh, um, yellow ochre if that's what you had. All right, guys, we're doing good. We're going to wrap through this pretty quick. These yeah. little lines, we don't want to paint every hair, right? You don't, but you do want to paint some that are a little more in detail. And you want his mane to be more glorious than even nature ever thought to make it. Mm. Not that that's really possible, but from the artistic sense it is. So let's do that. <coughs> when we get into his face, he'll come together so fast, and you'll be like, wait, where did oh, he come man. from? And we'll be like, oh, you did that. Don't try to um, inhale grape juice. If you like these square canvases, we do these on Tuesday, guys, at 5. Um, generally, they'll be like these kind of more lush. If you want to see what's coming up, if my mods have not already dropped that upcoming live video playlist, you guys can go uh, see what the upcoming live videos look like. I'm going to come here in just on the edge of this ear. See how I'm doing? Mm. Just a little bit. Just a little bit so that as I paint these little hairs that are flying out as they want to, over his little ear here. So wonderful. The yellow and the brown is almost orange. If you've not, if you've not done this before in a neutral painting like this, your burnt sienna and your yellow become almost like an orange. Mm. Sometimes you'll see me get a drop of water and I'll add in just to improve the flow. Yeah, see what we've got coming up. We've got a lot of fun stuff happening in January. We're doing a 16 by 20 uh, really kind of romantic uh, dress painting that's black and white with flowers, a little wedding band. You know, something perfect to kick off the new year. That's exciting. You can kind of see where he's just coming together. So those, those rough strokes layer into those next strokes, layer into those next strokes. When I come through this, I'll let you get a look at where we're at. You can see it's so funny the little puffs of uh um oh are they humidity. going over my palate look, look over the ear on on the reference you can see the little puffs come in over his ear it's like poof 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 it looks like someone's <laughs> blowing a little wind on his ear he needs a little wind on his ear <laughs> on the reference picture i mean uh, over here on the ref if you look at the reference picture every once in a while there's a little puff of how does it no you mean the one that i have you don't mean the one on the screen. So, so on the screen, if you'll look, his ear occasionally, because this is throwing so much over there, the but ear. It goes under it because it's. You, you, but it's I funny okay. because it's coming in over the. I have a, re I have a reference over <laughs> there. So it's like, I'm just like, what? I don't know what we're looking at. It's He's just, so sweet. My husband cute. puts up with me so much. I'm looking at cuteness. So. I'm really hoping you guys all had a wonderful, wonderful uh, holiday and are safe and doing okay. Uh, I like to add a little bit of that sort of orange gold to it. Just so that there's that, that motion and that glory. Mm -hmm. We need some glory. Aslan needs glory. You know, you can't, like, one of the, the most palpable things is when his mane is shorn. And, 
it was really interesting. Um, I have talked my kids into the books, right? But we were watching the movies this holiday season to do it. And when the White Witch had in the movie Aslan's mane on her, my son was like, she's not. <laughs> he was so offended. He was so horrified that like the little the little boy anger in him was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just wonderful. You're like, oh, the future will be okay. If if the kids care that much. It's really all we need for the future is to know that the next generation is just connected and empathic and emotionally involved. Hopefully by about now you're seeing this incredible motion to his fur and mane. Mm -hmm. You can exaggerate those things where it's appropriate. And you know, I mean, if you need to, you can always come back with like a dark color and be like, oh no, we gotta, we gotta make sure that around his face, there's a bit of a dark value, right? You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta ensure it. Now, as we come forward, as we're coming forward, you're gonna come into his chin. His chin is really quite light. So I'm gonna get into a much lighter color. We can always build up everything else, but we're going to start out by making sure. that that started to be laid in. And get a little yellow into it. Even a little of my cad yellow into it, maybe over here. Mm. Little gray, little black, right? It's right here at the lip. There's a bit of that gray shading into it. I have to let that dry for a second. Um, and then um, we can come back and make sure, well, I guess we can get, kind of make sure that there's the short hairs coming in. Everything okay, babe? Mm -hmm. I just saw you swinging in the, the corner of my eye. Oh, I was just noticing the room's getting cooler. Yes, it is, isn't it? Without the fireplace on. It does get cooler. It's almost tolerable now. <laughs> yes. All right, back. All right, Ooh. look at this for a minute. You want to get to about here. Can I say thank here, 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 you here. to Andrea? Here, 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 here. She sent the most amazing sticker. You said thank you, Andrea, for this for everyone who supports our channel and all the ways that you guys support our channel by subscribing, sharing, commenting, by super chat stickers, or joining our crazy, insane patronage. And I, I wish I could say it was crazy and insane because it's so awesome and it is awesome, but it's also because it's crazy and insane. Thank you We're for fixing, everybody. Fixing the, the, <laughs> thank you, everybody. The unintuitiveness, but there's a lot there. There's mm -hmm. so much there. I think so. so this is great. He's looking. He's, it's looking good. You were, good. But we were saying thank you to the, the sticker. Mm -hmm. Andrea. Oh my goodness. I'm amazing. You're amazing. I'm amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let's get in and lighten up his face. Make Continue. him the white lion that he is. White mm -hmm. lion that he is. But with a little bit of gold to it. Because, you know, that Cause start out kind of. You get a little, you know, that's a, is it? That little goldness kind of picks up from the sunlight and well no that's the they still have a bit of the color from their fur mm. in there so you don't want to completely Mm, the 
This looks so nice. Yeah, it'll come together real fast. That's sweet. This brush is just great for the short fur. And then we have a nice little shorter version of this to, to get some detailing going. And even get a little of that brown and yellow kind of coming in here a couple places. Start out kind of this over his eyebrow, and then we're going to use it to create those little mm. cat eyebrows that them cats have. That is the burnt sienna and a little bit of the add yellow. Yeah. Now this would be interesting because I've got to really kind of have this go lighter. It's a very sharp, kind of like distinctive edge. Mm. That's still fur, right? Yeah. And again, I'm turning the, the surface instead of my body. Yeah. Turning the surface instead of my body. Very light here, because I want to keep some of that darker under value. A what little bit of that orange. There? This is just the number eight Cambridge. Okay. Uh, this is a hog bristle brush that is a bright. A hog it's about bristle. the size of a thumb. Um, excuse the paint under my nails. And uh, <laughs> no manicure. And uh, it's a mix of hog and synthetic. So hog is from pigs, but pigs are not killed to make brushes. Pigs are killed to make other things. And brush companies source bristles from those places. Mm -hmm. And there's um, a process by yeah. sorting and grading and. There no. are tons of synthetic alternatives. If you really, really are concerned about that and, you know, want to make sure that your uh, brushes don't come from animal products. Um, I'm just saying that because a lot of people don't know. I get asked that question a lot. And so just letting you know, yes, there's, there's a way. So we're building up the highlights, right? Mm-hmm. You're building up the highlights. I'm building watching. them up. And I'm going to let everyone kind of catch where we're at as soon as we get to a place where we're like, yeah, we're there. I love how fast he comes together. Mm -hmm. Life and paintings come together in that last little bit. So patience is required. There he is looking very regal. Starting to get there, starting to be a fellow. I may tip him forward so I can see um, uh, the symmetry of his face. Sometimes you got to fix some symmetry. And that's what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the right side. <laughs> that's a lot of humidity. No, I like it. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm just balancing the right side uh, to the left side. It's like it's like you have a campfire. <laughs> Let's see how we're balancing out his face. Silly. There we go. How is that? Checking that out. Look at that. See where you are in the system. Getting those layers built up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My navel's yellow. Now, there's some real directionality on uh, the fur of the nose. 
So even as you're painting, you can kind of create that. Don't give up on it. You've got it. I'll flip this over so that I can really see it quite well. And again, I'm using my big brush. I may come back with, you know, a smaller brush if I deem that super necessary. I may um, kind of allow, I'm going to just softly dry brush over it. So dry brushing is where there's not a lot of paint on my brush. There's not a lot of water. It's a, one of the many, many ways to blend on your surface. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know why it got cooler in here. Mm. Kitchen door was left open. Yeah. As it do. All right, there you go. Starting to get him in. Starting to get him in. Ooh, Christine wants to know, what kind of humidity machine are you using? I need one bad. Um, it's the Amazon Special Looks Like a Cube. Do, do, do. You can kind of see it in there. Do, do, do. Something like that. It's, it's a big egg thing that glows. It was like 15 or 20 bucks. <laughs> It's the kind that has the ultrasonic thing and it goes. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. And what I would say is that generically speaking, almost all of them perform pretty much the same. Um, it, they just have a little piezoelectric gizmo that ma that uh, vaporizes the water and makes little humidity bubbles. So, you know, I suspect any of them in that 20, 30 price range is probably going to do the job. You know, but you're going to have to shop around because Amazon does like to mark things up when they see oh the tension on Oh, my gosh, they do. But your local grocery, I think this section may have come from CVS. Uh, like, I was in there, and I was like, ooh, look, that one would work, and I grabbed it. Okay, I'm going to rinse out. But I highly suggest the VIX one that has the light-up uh, starry sky thing, and it has a little pocket for you to put VIX vapor rub in it works really good for kids and adults. I like it. So there you go. More information on humidifiers than perhaps I should know. Then you should worry about that. Yeah, it's okay. Right? People need to know. They asked. You ask, we tell you. Just kind of creating some little darkness here at the nose. You can use your fingers if you need to. Blushing that in. Making sure that's there. So what we're doing right now is creating some of those like under fur tones. We're giving that gold back in. We're really into it. I might switch to a six just so I have a little more control around the, the thing. I could do a four. I could switch to any brush that gives me control. What I want is just to be able to make the turns. Make the turns. And as it is, I'm going to have to fix like, like this part of his little eye. A weird little white lines on it. Now, coming in here, I'm going to grab a little of my white and my Naples yellow, my number four brush. And make sure that close to the eye, I have that nice light value that is needed. Yeah. There we go. A nice value close to the eye. And he does have a bit of that nice light, you know, cat sort of bit of hair. So if I come in with the brown and my yellow, I can start to talk about that, infer it, and then we can paint it in and over it pretty easily once we know where it's at. So sometimes it's easier to highlight and create it than it is to
Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, where we're here at here because it's gonna go fast from here. Is it? Yeah. I'd say we are minutes from bed. Minute. Crazily. <laughs> we'll see. Am okay. I right? We'll Let's see find what out. All right. So I am into the six, which is a you know slightly near Cambridge. I might get. My uh, water is a little dirty, so I need these colors to be bright from be, here until the end. You got clean water or you need clean water? No, I got myself clean water. Okay. So I'm going to do an interesting thing here. I'm going to come with a little bit of uh, my dark, and I'm going to add this. You see this little kind of patch of discoloration up here? Mm -hmm. This fur. You may even kind of... Talk a little bit about his little liney wrinkles, but what I would say is it's just really a big deal about the discoloration on his fur. A little yellow and a little white. Dry brushing, letting that paint show through underneath. There we go. Letting that paint show through underneath. Little water on my brush. Yep. Ooh, that blushes him. Are you dry brushing there? A little bit dry brushing, and I'm putting a very bright highlight under his eye. Very bright highlight over his eye. Couple bright highlights there. Maybe a little bit right here. Coming down. Dry brushing again. Dry brushing again, letting a lot of this still show through. Mm -hmm. Bring some. Light color right there. Lightening him up. He gets lighter, don't he? Yeah. Pull up that lightness on his nose. He's just getting lighter. He's just more Aslan than Aslan. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're dry brushing, don't forget to regularly rinse out your brush. He's getting so pretty. I love that whole thing where, for me, and I, I don't want to impose this on anyone painting long, but for me, Sometimes paintings are just more than even references can ever be. I think it's because they speak to the emotional space of a situation. It just came together. Yeah, it does. It just comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. He's pretty. 
Oh, yeah. Mm. And I love Karen the time. joined Emoji Club. Huh? Karen has joined Emoji Thank Club. Thank you for joining Emoji Club. You can now freely emoji with your emoji friends. Mm. Express uh, yourself. I let's see. Um, Margaret, can any mods help me with the correct link for the brush guys website, please? The link in the description for the art sherpa brushes isn't working. I will check that mm. link. It was working earlier, and so I will check it and they will help you find it. If you but if you go to www.thebrushguys.com, make sure you type that in correctly because otherwise you get to a crazy website you don't want to see. That is true. Safe search on. Um, once you get there, I'm a featured teacher <laughs> and brushes that I demonstrate and use on the show are there. Use the code, the art Sherpa, all one word for a discount. I'm sure the moderators had it like totally. Sometimes I just step in because, you know. Okay, I just love it. Now is a good time, you know, if anything got away from you, you have to clean anything up, you can do that. Uh, I might come back with a little bit of, you know, the paint kind of came over maybe in that space where I didn't want it to. So where that could have happened. Got a little hair in his nostrils, <laughs> as they do. You know, you can just check around and be like, you know, is everything where I'm hoping it would be? Clean up any of those little details. It's the time. I feel like we have Aslan. That is pretty amazing. Yeah. I feel like we have a nice, beautiful white line, and he goes with... Uh, honestly, I think he'd be beautiful with the Santa painting, to be yeah. really honest. There is a matching painting coming up to him in the future of a little boy talking to an owl on a Narnia landscape. I feel like it's Edward, but you can feel like whatever. You gotta um, sign him. I do gotta sign him. Um, how will you sign? I'm gonna sign him in white. Ooh. I know it's risky business, but let's see how it goes. I will put out some fluid paint. I think the humidifier is now part of the kit. <laughs> it's mine. I, I want a cat one that matches my cat sharpener though. Cat on cat. Mm. Cat on cat on cat. How are you guys feeling? Um, everybody, uh, Mahalia says, I love that. And Mary says, uh, thank you to Cat. And Deborah says, he's gorgeous. And Suzanne, I love Suzanne because Suzanne rocking the Z. Suzanne says he's beautiful. Let's give him a signature. Now, signatures. Here's the thing. If you've been with me for a minute, you've heard my little thing on signatures. And what I'll say is the signature is part of your composition. Some artists are like, never sign. You should be such a unique sunflower that in a field of sunflowers, they know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. That's very cool. You'll know if you're that sunflower. Um, and you should do it exactly what you want to do in your art. I do, however, personally feel like every mark I make on the canvas from here to here and here to here is part of the composition and can pull the eye. If I were to take some CAD red and sign it right here, you would really see my signature. It would be seen. And if that's what was the most important part of the painting to me, I suppose that's what I'd want to do. However, the most important part of the painting to me is the experience of painting it and its balance and how it feels all engaged with itself. So I'm going to paint a white signature in. It's there and legible if somebody were to collect this piece someday in the far, far future. They would know. They would go, oh, well, that's a Sherpa. Oh, with the little... whiskers. Um, You know, we can do those guys, but here's what. <laughs> Y'all they... never like it. Oh, that's true. Whiskers are one of those things where if if you're a beginner and you do the whiskers I'll wrong, I'll show you real quick. Oh, so rough. So whiskers are things that can be struggled with. But just with a nice, you're using a detailed pen or detailed brush. Yeah. And stroking to the strength of your direction. Yes, I am. It's like you've been here before. But you're ambi, so you can go both directions. Well, you know. And so, but if you're doing it at home, make sure you spin it to make sure your brush and practice. 
Yeah, that's just one of those things that can impact your composition because, again, every mark, and you can see, I just wanted to show you because you asked about it. You would have to decide, is this substantively a big mm -hmm. deal for this piece? And, and I'll tell you, uh, just quite honestly, just because you can see something in a painting does not, in a reference photo, doesn't mean it belongs in your painting. Right. So a lot of times, unless the cat, and again, I wanted to show you what was here. Unless the cat is really improved by the whisker, sometimes those aren't really what you need to put in if you understand that he's a cat, mm. you know. But if you want the lines kind of, and honestly, if I was going to just do these, I'd probably exaggerate them a bit. I might even use a monogram liner, but who knows where my monogram liner is. In the brushes. I for sure would not use black. I don't know in what way that would improve the piece, and so I would be reluctant to use it in any way. Mm -hmm. There you go. Let's see how those go in and how they look. So you've got to be careful. You could come back and kind of shade these a bit and do some stuff, but it's really going to be about them being a lighter value. Sometimes people will use a Posca pen or some tool like that. I think it's risky business there. It is a risky business, and you have to decide what's right for you at your stage of the journey. Remember, the outcome of the painting wasn't the purpose of the painting. <laughs> I know it feels like it is, right? feels like it is. It feels like... The result you get is why you did it, but it isn't. The reason that you're painting is because it gives you a minute to spend some time with your creative self, listen to your imagination, your inner spirit, let your soul have a moment, let your being have a moment. Creativity is an important life skill. It's how we solve the problems in our life, especially the challenging ones. So when you're looking at your painting and you're trying to evaluate its worth, Instead of going at it critically and comparing and really judging it, ask yourself, did I put energy into enjoying the time I spent painting it? And we're going to really focus that on 2021 about taking deep breath, relaxing ourselves in the creative process, enjoying the act of putting paint on the canvas, enjoying learning new skills, enjoying learning new techniques, enjoying getting to know our calmer happier selves in a safe and creative space and that's only going to work if you're not critical of yourself because if you're criticizing yourself you're bullying yourself and that i if i if criticizing you would help you i would be the meanest teacher on the planet if it, <laughs> if it would, were a useful thing right honest feedback sometimes can be useful but only when you're a much more developed painter like when you're when you're ready to kind of paint without tutorials and you're trying to figure out how to construct paintings yourself, sometimes some honest feedback, kind, constructive, useful, actionable honest feedback is helpful. But criticism rarely is in comparison as what does Brené Brown say, the thief of joy, for sure that is. Mm. So with that said, please share your finished lines with me on the website. You can do that on the comments of the webpage. On the Facebook group, you know you can share an unlimited number of Art Sherpa tutorials. If you had done all 1,000 paintings I ever did on this channel, you're allowed to post them unlimitedly every day as much as you want talking to your friends. It's an open posting thing. Original stuff is a Friday activity with Fine Art Friday hashtag, but other than that, all week it's like that. Share it there. Share it on the Facebook page. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. Hashtag Art Sherpa. Follow all the things. I'll check the links after and make sure that we chapter bookmark this. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Let it out. Thank you for your time you spent with me. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.